Hi class. We're in chapter 10, rhythms originating in the ventricles. Your objectives for this chapter would be to state the criteria for each of the ventricle rhythms, correctly identify ventricular rhythms on a variety of strips, state the adverse effects for each ventricular rhythm, state the possible treatment for the ventricular rhythm, and explain fusion beats. The word on ventricular rhythms. So ventricular rhythms are your most lethal of all the rhythms. They command great respect from healthcare personnel. You can have a heart rate varying from zero to more than 250 beats per minute. And although some ventricular rhythms can be tolerated well, many cause decreased cardiac output or cardiac standstill. Most ventricular rhythms respond well to medication. However, the medications used to treat them can also cause them in some cases. Some ventricular rhythms can be treated only by electric shock to the heart, and others, despite aggressive treatment, are usually fatal. So the first one we're going to look at is premature ventricular contractions, or PVCs. These occur uh, earlier than the next expected normal QRS. The QRS uh, complex is usually wide and bizarre, and the P wave is usually absent. There's a deflection of the ST segment and T wave. The T wave is opposite that of the QRS. And then a key feature of your uh, PVCs is it's usually followed by a compensatory pause, as we see right here. So you have a, a different PVC. You have couplet PVC in which you have two occurring back to back. And then you can have ventricular bigeminy and ventricular trigeminy. Next, we're going to talk about the agonal rhythm. Your agonal rhythm is your dying heart. The heart rate is usually less than 20. The rhythm is irregular. There are no P waves. There's no pulse. And this patient is actually dying, okay? Um, the treatment for a patient with the uh, agonal rhythm will be to begin CPR, uh, administer epinephrine, atropine, and oxygen. Next is your idioventricular rhythm. It originates in the ventricles. The QRS is wide and bizarre with no P waves. You see here. Rhythm is usually irregular, and your rate is usually between 20 and 40 beats per minute. And a common cause is end-stage cardiac disease. Next is the accelerated idioventricular rhythm. It also originates in the ventricles, has a wide QRS. QRS looks bizarre. And either there will be no P waves or the P waves will be hidden. Irregular rhythm. And your rate will be between 40 and 100. So the key difference between this one and your idioventricular is going to be your rate. Okay. Then you have ventricular tachycardia. Your P waves may be present or absent usually absent, okay? If present, they have no set relationship to the QRS. Okay. Here's another look at ventricular tachycardia. You have a rapid heartbeat originating from a lower pumping chamber of the heart, which is down here in the ventricle. The incident 
of ventricular tachycardic peaks in the middle decades of life. It can be triggered by reduced levels of potassium and magnesium in the blood or drinking uh, caffeine may cause ventricular tachycardia in the patients that uh, already have weak or vulnerable hearts. It can also be brought on by illegal drugs such as cocaine. And the symptoms include palpitations, lightheadedness, chest pain, and faintness. It's diagnosed with the uh, EKG and treatment includes medications, uh, or insertion of ICD or catheter ablation. About 62% of the cases of uh, sudden cardiac death are due to ventricular tachycardia. And ventricular tachycardia causes about 300,000 deaths per year in the U.S. So here's another um, ventricular rhythm and it's called torsades to point. And we see here what's happening with this rhythm to your ventricles. Our next one is ventricular fibrillation. This is a chaotic pattern of electrical activity in the ventricles in which the electrical impulses arise from many different foci. There's no uh, cardiac output. An untreated defib causes most cases of sudden cardiac death in patients outside of the hospital. Here's an illustration of your uh, normal heartbeat. And then here's what's happening with ventricular fibrillation. So instead of your uh, ventricles actually beating, they just quiver, okay? And this is the pattern you'll see on the EKG with BVA. Here's what's called ventricular asystole or standstill, in which there's no heart rate, no rhythm, no P wave, there's nothing, okay? This is uh, your, uh, True asystole is when the patient has uh, died or gone into complete cardi full cardiac arrest. Your ventricular pacemaker is a pacemaker inserted to pace the ventricles. And you see here, it, you will see the uh, pacemaker spike on the EKG. You'll have a wide QRS. And that's what you'll look for is your pacer fight before the QRS. That's how you know you have a ventricular pacemaker. And your rhythm should be regular. Okay. So your um, ventricular rhythms are known as rhythms of death or killer rhythms. Because if someone has a ventricular rhythm, first of all, um, we know that by the time you get down to um, the ventricles being uh, the pacemaker, then you know they only have an inherent rate of about 20, 20 to 40 beats per minute. So that by the time they get to um, a patient who's have in ventricular rhythms, they are in serious trouble, okay? And um, these patients will most often need uh, CPR or um, will need to be shot. Okay, and that's all I have for you guys today. Your assignment will be to draw an example of the rhythm for each of the ventricular rhythms and state the criteria for each rhythm. Submit your pictures, and I will see you guys next lecture. Bye-bye.